Good afternoon. My name is Kimberly T. Malone. I'm one of the librarians here at Seattle City Hall College. I'm so happy that you're able to join us for COSI this week. The library hosts this series every week because we see it as an extension of our charge to promote freedom of information and open exchange of ideas. So as we have our discussion today, whether or not you agree with every single thing you hear from your neighbors or in this room, or read if you were to check out the books on our shelves, we want everyone to have wide access to lots of information so that we can all learn and grow from each other. At the end of this, I'll ask you to fill out a very, very brief survey asking what you'd like to see in the future so we can keep this series relevant to you all. And if you're interested in learning more about this topic or other topics, you can always visit the library's reference desk and there's someone there happy to help you. But today, I want you to give a warm welcome to Omar Osman, Seattle Central student and ASC Executive of Administration. Please join me in welcoming Omar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Look at this. It's a beautiful day, beautiful people. Thank you all for coming. I wasn't expecting this much group. It was very beautiful to see. It. Couldn't get more than this. Thank you so much, Paul, for coming. Um, today we're going to talk about diversity in Seattle Central College, as you see from the uh, the welcome board. And uh, I hope we will not write a lot of things. It will be much of the activities will be uh, interactive and talking to each other. It won't be writing. So. Because I'm also a student, I'm part of the student government body, but uh, I would love us to not write and interact more. Thank you. So the first thing that we're going to do today will be introduction and language. What do I mean by that? Um, I am Omar Osman. I was born in Somalia. At the age of three months, uh, my mom fled from Somalia, civil war, and came to a refugee camp in Kenya. I grew up in a refugee camp in Kenya and uh, it was fun. There were more than 28 communities from around African nations. And uh, who knows refugee camp here? Just show of hand. What, what is a refugee camp? Good, a few people actually. Good. A refugee camp is a, a settlement that is not temporary. Uh, that is temporary, I mean, that is not permanent. There are tents. People live there, they wait uh, aid from agencies, that kind of lifestyle. Finally, I came to the country, United States, in July 2016. That was my first time I came in St. Louis. And I moved to Seattle in October 2017. 2016, I mean. Uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, just if you can turn yourself, not the chair, but uh, just yourself. And we're going to try today if we can learn language just in a couple of minutes. So I'm going to talk in Somali, but I will do what I'm, if you are able to see, then do what I'm doing. So you're going to put your bags down, be able to, flexible today and to move. So don't stick in your place. So we're going to do Istad. Maybe say it. Istad. Okay, Fariso. Fariso. Stag. Fariso. Okay. I want you to say, and I will do. What is this? Stag. Fariso. Stag. Fariso. Okay, we're gonna learn two more words today. What did you learn? Stag, which means stand. Fariso means sit down. We're gonna learn set a height. Which means, how are you in Somali language? Say it hi. Can everybody say, say it hi. Say it hi. It means, how are you in Somali language? Say it hi. Okay, maybe a visual, one more word for, the, for this uh, language here. Uh, we're going to do goodbye, which means uh, in Somali you would say, Nabadgalio. This might be hard. So, na bad galio. Na bad galio. Na bad galio. Okay, what is this? No, feliso. What is this? How do I say how are you in Somali? 
No, Santa Heights. Come on, don't let me down. Santa Heights. How do you say goodbye in Somali? Yes, that's the Nabat Gali. Okay, one more. We're going to do the last time. Okay, you got it. I see you. Okay, one more time. How do you say how are you? Santa Hai. How do you say goodbye? Good. Okay. Uh, the next thing will be uh, we're gonna do a poll, which is so. If you have a cell phone, text that code uh, Omar Osman nine three four two 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 three three three, and we want to answer these questions and see the view of the audience. Oh, why is it not appearing? It's over here. to the number 22333 and then you will be able to get access to this call and uh, we will answer these following questions. These are seven questions and I would love to see what you guys think about it. So text that number, that call to that number. About a minute should be okay. Everybody ready? Yes? No? Okay. So, oh, somebody I see already. Good. So, if you text the code only Omar Osman 934 to this number, 2233, you should be able to get access to. And, and then answering that question, you might choose A or B. Good. Good. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram contribute 
due to implicit biases. <coughs> yes, uh, social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram contribute to implicit biases. We have 30 more seconds. Don't do the code and text in another time. Just text A or B this time. You should be good to go. Fifteen seconds. And we're gonna move to the next question. This group think about it's true, and 12% think it's false, which is good. Uh, and what do we mean by this? Uh, why did I ask this question? Because um, you see, like I'm Somali, I'm from Somalia, and when I'm in Facebook, almost all the time it recommends me to have a Somali friend. I've never seen Facebook recommending me to have a Chinese friend, I don't know why. That's how it happens. It usually links you to be a friend with people who are similar to you. So it's, uh, it's in a way, it's self-segregating you, it's putting you in that bubble. Uh, moving on to the third question. We're gonna do this one so first, about 30 seconds. We want to rush. So, something government programs, practices and institutions contribute to segregation and bias. Yes. Fifteen seconds. <coughs> so, what happened is when we came to the United States, uh, especially when we moved to Seattle, we lived in Renton. My mother, I, and my siblings. So. Since we lived in Renton, we wanted, I wanted to take my siblings to a school, a middle school in Seattle. We couldn't do that because there is something called school district, which limits to people because they are low income people live together, you know, uh, uh, refugees live together, and they can't go to school in a different district because of that limitation. So it limits people to not interact and move from across the city. We will move to the fourth question. People I interact with at Seattle Central College are of the same ethnic background as I am. Do you agree or disagree? <laughs> seconds as well. We'll move to the fifth question. Ninety-four percent say it's false. Good. And six percent say yes. The fifth question says, I, non-foreign student, I speak, understand, and or have a desire to learn multiple languages other than English. So we'll give 15 seconds as well.
good results. Uh, just, just by volunteer. Who speaks more than one language here? Good number. Fluently? Yeah. More than one language? Okay. Who speaks more than two languages here fluently? Okay. It's reduced. Who speaks more than three languages? Okay, good. Fewer. Speaks four languages. Genius. Five? No? Fluently, maybe four, maybe one is not fluent, but five. <coughs> we'll move to the next question. The second question. I am an international student. I speak, understand, and or have a desire to learn other languages. Results. Seventy-five percent. Yes. So we'll move to the last question. Which is, I like to meet new people and have new experiences. Like the other person will speak. If it was you, this person will speak now. And then answer the same question. And we'll move to the second question. I want you to meet another person, not their first person. So whether you're going to move or uh, stay or talk to another person in your row. So I'm just visualizing how people will do, like how will they interact. So is that clear? The first question, 30 seconds each. The second question, you will move to another person and do the same. Here is the first question. Where were you born and some of your first memories? Talk about where you were born and your first memories to one person.
Okay, time is up. The second person. The same question.
number five, a time that you felt discriminated against and how you dealt with it. How you, how you handled it. So 30 seconds with a new person.
questions for more than this, but because of time, we're going to move to the actual presentation. And uh, you may focus on this side, maybe just turn around if you can, and uh, that would be good to go. So, because she has never came across or media doesn't show a lot of uh, a lot of information the information that is needed about it so and I came across about this word because look at this I'm a refugee I go to Seattle Central as a student but this young lady here she doesn't know about it and she could know if she talks to other people and she will find out who is a refugee who is a you know, a Japanese who is a Vietnam, who is uh, from another country, who is an African uh, Nigerian, who is an African American. But how is that possible? That will be possible only when we integrate. Another thing that inspired me to do this was uh, just by visualizing the social pattern of the school. 
I went to the cafeteria during the summer and the park and I've seen students put themselves into bubbles. We'll see Vietnamese students sitting together, uh, Nigerian students sitting together, Japanese students sitting together, and it happens accidentally. They don't call each other and say, yo, we're all the Chinese come together. They don't do that. Or all the African Americans come together. They don't do that. It happens automatically because our brain is tuned always to look for the similar and familiar pattern. And that's what we are looking all the time. So when I saw that and I wanted to change that situation, maybe to inspire you today to take this message and change your friends and people that you meet, your classmates, and even talk to different people. So, we're talking about diversity here. Uh, one funny story is, in Africa, I only used to see one type of carrot. But look at this in America, we have only five different types of carrots. So this is the beauty of this country. It's so, it's so beautiful that we have many of everything. You can walk down the street and you see sushi, you see uh, you know, teriyaki, you see uh, what do we call uh, some other Indian food or some other African food? Many, many, you know, cultures, and it doesn't happen everywhere. I've been to Africa many places, and all you see is one community living together. And most of the time, we don't even encourage other communities or people to go and step outside their bubble. So, but it's beautiful this country. So take advantage of this country that you are. It doesn't happen. So this is like a school itself. Just being in America is a school because. You meet with every nationality, basically, that exists in the entire world. So, if you're a student, we are all students. If you're a teacher, whether you're a teacher or a student or a worker or a faculty member, every day is knowledge, every day is learning. Every person you meet, you can learn. Someone said, and I don't know uh, his name, uh, his or her name, but they said, I've never met a person so ignorant that I could not learn anything from them. So there's always something new to learn from a new person. This was similar to what I was talking about, the, how the government system is uh, self-segregating ourselves within the uh, city. So when I was finding this, uh, when I was doing research on this topic, every time I put uh, self-segregation, these two uh, familiar faces, I'm sure many of you know this, this is MLK, Okay, MLK and uh, Malcolm X, they're, only these results pop up and they always talk about race, but this, it's not race what we are talking about today. We are talking about uh, how does self-segregation happen? It happens, uh, you know, uh, familiar and similar, those are the two key terms. And how is it that, for example, if I'm a cigarette smoker, the, co the conversation starter will be another cigarette smoker, another fellow cigarette smoker. That's where we can start the conversation. Or you might see uh, gender or language or all of those are things that cause self-segregation. But it's not addressed a lot in the media because every time you talk about self-segregation, it's only race, the issue between black and white. That's what is in the media, but not always such a self-segregation that exists in a similar this institution. And we need to be aware of that and even... So this is one of the books that I found was interesting that talked about uh, this similar issue that I'm addressing today. And it's by uh, Beverly Daniel Tatum. Uh, Why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria? It's almost also close to race, but it's one of the books that I found which was interesting that addressed this issue of self-segregation in the school. I found this picture in Missouri, St. Louis, when I was uh, one of the hotels. And this is how we always see each other, that we are so different, that we are so opposite, that we are, whether it's male or female, or uh, black or brown or white, or you know, any type of person, Let's not see each other as opposite. Let's see each other as people that can contribute to each other, that we can learn from each other. Another thing I found out was the culture has an effect on how whether the person 
is willing to learn someone new and learn something, uh, some a new person and a, a new language or a new culture or a new you know cultural dance or anything. Uh, there are two cultures. There's a culture that is welcoming the person that doesn't look like them. There's a or a collective culture versus individualistic culture. So in this institution, we need to be more of a this. We need to be in the same cycle and not see each other as uh, people from others and me and that kind of thing. So, and how do we reach that? We will do, we will reach that goal when we make a culture shift. I don't mean throw up your culture, but try to change. Try to change in a way that we were taught. I know what we were taught is it's not good to talk to a stranger, but that is not true all the time. It's good to address someone during your lunch time or any other time, say hi. I have more friends, and I'm not talking about classmates, I have more friends that I made at Seattle Central than even my classmates that I know. How is that possible? One of the things is just people are different, Intro, uh, what are they called, extrovert and introvert, but still, even if you're introverted, it's also good to come up and you know, approach someone and say, hi, how do you greet? How do you, what is this food that you're eating in your culture? How is it called? How do you greet in your culture, or any other question that you think is relevant? Finally, let's break this barrier. This is Berlin Wall. You remember, you know this story when this was removed, how people, you know, came up together. So let's remove this barrier between us. Let's uh, be open to each other and willing to talk to a new person in school. And. Uh, that's the end of our presentation today. Thank you all. If there's any question, I would love to hear. And uh, yes, I'll take questions right now. Is this like an ongoing dialogue? Are we going to have more of these classes? Because I found a lot of these questions incredibly interesting and important to ask each other, but 30 seconds isn't a lot of time to really get dive into a lot of those questions. That's true. That is a good question. Um, so I would love to do more of this if you're willing to come and listen, but because of the space, and actually this meeting, I have to make this one quarter before and you know get this to get this. Uh, but it's very beautiful to see uh, almost 60 people coming here today and listening to and you know getting this message. So the most important thing is, to inspire one person so that that person can, can go outside and also have, because of this event today, uh, which I wanted to ask next, because of this today, who will go outside and make one friend that they don't know, they are not similar to them, but just approach and just say, hey, I want to introduce myself to you. My name is Omar Osman. I would love to know your culture or your language or, you know, uh, to, to, to create diversity and diversify ourselves. Who will do that by show of hand? Good, thank you all. Thank you all, thank you. I'm not sure if I answered your question. I said I would love to do this, but I'm taking classes. I'm uh, working as a student president at CR Central. So there's so much work on me, but I will talk to Kimberly and see whether if this is available or not. So I'll take other questions. This is less of a question, more of a comment. Um, for people of color who are from the United States, if you ask us where are we from and we say we're from here, don't ask, no, where are you really from? Because that's really annoying. I'm happy to share where my grandparents are from. I'm happy to share all that. But yeah, I'm from here. So <laughs> thanks. Thank you so much. That is good, and we need to value that. OK, good. Thank you. Uh, I didn't realize I'm from Stockton, California, and I've just been here since uh, June of uh, last year. But I didn't realize that was going on in, um, until you brought it to uh, my awareness. But I'm quite sure I, I try to be blind to the fact of that. But um, I like how you brought that up to my attention. So every day I'm going to make it a point that I talk to somebody out of my culture. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And I will come for you, sir, seeing your hand first. I, I, I'm a little bit late, but I missed a bit at the beginning. But uh, as someone who's traveled a lot, I think traveling is the number one way to cure racism. Right? I mean, well, 
Travel, yes, yes, I agree. Travel, travel. You see, if you can, travel. I actually wanted to respond to this young lady's uh, statement. Is it just people of color that ask you where are you from? No, no, I mean, sorry, I was talking about just that's an experience that I had. Most of the people ask me. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was saying four people of color. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I want to say, like Omar, he said he's busy. There's somebody else from here. He can help Omar. We can be all together to be one. Thank you. Yes, united we stay. Yes, thank you. So, um, I have been uh, out of the country before. Um, I lived in South Africa for like two years. Um, also in Swaziland and Lesotho. So, the, the great benefit of travel is you do get to learn more about culture but also you learn to understand one another and how we all fit together in this giant puzzle that's called life. And I encourage people to learn other cultures and learn a little bit of languages because uh, when I went to South Africa, there's 11 official languages. I had to learn a little bit of eight languages. Um, and I've met people who are from Northern Africa, I've met people from Asia, uh, from Middle East, everywhere. And I encourage people to talk to people that are not from here or that they've never seen before because you can actually learn a lot and be able to help build your own life. I just want to take this time to recognize that we're at the end of our session, but I want us to thank Omar. Julian is at the back of the room and he is taking your surveys. I will also take them. I would love to have these conversations continue. If you'd like to lead a conversation, come talk to me and we're getting the spring schedule together already. Have a great day and thank you for your time, attendance, and attention.